directed by Ned Vizinzi. I can never say that name. It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my March wrap-up 2020. I read a total of 18 books this month so these are the next five on my list. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about in this part of the wrap-up is It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizinzi. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a boy named Craig who is 15 years old. He has a failed suicide attempt and he ends up in the psych ward and he meets a very wide range of characters and this is his story. I really liked Craig as a main character in this. I found him very witty and funny and a great pleasure to get to know. From what I've heard from other people who've read the book, the representation of depression and suicide idealization is very well done. I myself can't relate to it, but I'm sure a lot of people can, so I really liked that part of this book. I really liked getting to know all the different characters in the psych ward. I think that they all had very unique personalities that really shone in this book, and I really liked getting to know them better. After I finished this book, I actually found out that the author lost his battle to depression, and I find that the book just becomes so much more poignant because of that. I really wanted to watch the film, but it ended up not being on Netflix, so I didn't get to, but I've heard it's really good as well, so definitely check this out if you can. The chance. next book that I have is probably one of my favorite books that I've read this year so far. It is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, and I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I'm obsessed with it. This follows Alessandra Santos, who is the often overlooked second daughter, and she has a plan to get more notice. She is going to woo the Shadow King, marry him, then murder him and take his kingdom. But she is not the only one who wants him dead. And it's like the story of that. I freaking loved this book. The cast of characters are just so much fun to get to know. You are instantly hooked from the very first line. Like, I'll read it to you. It is so freaking good. It is. They've never found the body of the first and only boy who broke my heart. And they never will. If that doesn't make you want to read this book, I don't know what will. I absolutely loved Alessandra. She is not a nice girl. She is cunning, she is deceitful, and I loved every second that she was on page. She's unapologetically herself. She won't take shit from anybody. Not to mention, she is so funny. I was honestly rooting for her the entire story, hoping that she was successful in her plan, which sounds really bad because it was to literally murder the Shadow King, but I was not the biggest fan of the Shadow King at the beginning. He definitely grew on me in the end, and I definitely like him a lot more. His background was very mysterious, and I loved learning more about him as the story progressed. He's definitely just like a closeted little cinnamon roll. The banter between the Shadow King and Alessandra was just so well done. I found myself laughing out loud for a lot of the times they were interacting. I loved the slowish burn romance in this and watching the Shadow King learn to trust Alessandra more and more. It was just so chef's kiss, so good. I also just loved all of the female female friendships in this book. Hesty and Rhonda were just so much fun to read about. I loved that they had their own kind of side stories going along with the main story. The book was also very sex positive, which I really loved. I loved just seeing the author tackle the whole issue of the double standards that males and females have and that women should be empowered and in charge of their own bodies. It was just such a good undertone to the whole story. I loved the whole mystery of the book, trying to figure out who killed the king's parents and who was still trying to assassinate him. I definitely did not see the ending coming, so that was a huge bonus for me, but it definitely worked really well in my opinion. I really, really, really want a sequel to this book. I know that it's probably not coming, but I just really want to see Alessandra and the king rule the world together and wreak havoc. And I just love a villain love story, okay? I love him. The next book that I have for this part of the wrap-up is In Five Years. This is by Rebecca Serrell, and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. After the job interview of a lifetime, Danny is proposed to by her boyfriend, completing her five-year plan. When she returns home that night, she falls asleep and she ends up having a dream five years into the future in 2025. The only thing is, is that her life is completely different than how she envisioned it, including a man who is not her fiancé. 
When she wakes up, she decides to ignore the dream and just continue on with her life as normal, but then she runs into the man of her dreams and everything changes. So this book is very different than what you expect from the synopsis on the back. It does not prepare you for the heartbreak that you are going to feel. I can't say that I necessarily liked Danny as a character. Her every action is basically just out of convenience. It's not what she really wants and it was very frustrating to read. But I did really enjoy the found family aspect between Danny and her friend Bella. I think that you could really feel their genuine connection and care for each other. The ending gutted me. It was not what I expected. I was hoping that it would be something different, but alas, it was not. Overall, it was very entertaining, but definitely do not think that it's some epic romance that it appears to be because it's not, your heart is gonna get broken. But it's a good time. The next book I'm gonna talk about for this part of the wrap-up is When We Were Vikings. This is by Andrew David McDonald. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Zelda, who is a 21-year-old Viking enthusiast who has fetal alcohol syndrome. She lives with her older brother, Gert. She discovers that her brother is having to resort to some questionable means to make ends meet, so she decides that she is going to be legendary like the Vikings and help out a little bit, and it's like the story of that. This book, again, was not what I expected it was going to be. That is apparently the theme of this wrap-up. But I did really enjoy watching Zelda grow as the story progressed. I enjoyed Gert to a point. He kind of pissed me off with how protective he was of Zelda. Like, I understand she's very vulnerable and naive. She doesn't really understand social cues. But at times, it was just a little bit too much for me. I do like his character development in the end and how he kind of, like, let her off the leash which was nice to see, but it was just frustrating to see him not give her that chance at the beginning. My favorite part of the story was definitely Annie, or more affectionately known as AK-47 by Zelda. She was Gert's girlfriend, and she was just such a great support system for Zelda. I loved watching her kind of make Gert take a step back and let Zelda explore the world around her. My one, like, huge complaint about this book was the amount of the use of the R word. I get why it was done, but I'm just not a fan of that word whenever it's used. I just I can't deal with it. It's just not a nice word in my opinion. But overall, it is a good self-discovery book. I think the journey that Zelda went on was very unrealistic, but... I still enjoyed it nonetheless, so 3.5 out of 5. And then the final book that I'm going to be talking about for this part of the wrap-up is Once in Future. This is by Amy Rose Capita and Corey McCarthy. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. I was very disappointed in it. It's a retelling of the King Arthur story. It follows Ari, who is a space immigrant, and she just so happens to be the 42nd incarnation of King Arthur. After finding Excalibur, Ari pairs up with Merlin, the great wizard, who works with her to try to dismantle a tyrannical corporation named Mercer, and it's like the story of that. I was super excited about this book to begin with because I'm just a huge fan of retellings, but I was definitely disappointed with this one. I did not care about any of the characters or what happened to them. I was bored throughout most of the story. One thing that I will commend the book for is its LGBTQIA plus representation. There are a lot of different characters in this book who have all different sexualities. There's also a lot of skin colors in this, a lot of neurodiversity as well. Everything is discussed very openly with respect, which I really enjoyed. There's a lot of talk about pronouns as well, which was nice. It's very rare to see characters that identify as pansexual or use they them pronouns or represented as gender fluid, so I really liked seeing that. The only two characters that I cared slightly about were Merlin and Morgana, but they weren't like huge parts of the story. I mean, they were, but I wish there was more of them instead of Ari and her friends, to be honest. Overall, it was okay, but I'm not gonna end up ever rereading it, so I'm getting rid of the book, so check it out in our own haul soon. Alright everybody, so that was part two of three of my March wrap-up for 2020. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!